Oppo's done it again with a couple of blockbuster announcements here at their launch event in Singapore. And I'm here to bring you the rundown of this event. You're probably watching our hands-on videos right now, but it's Joshua Gar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to the Oppo launch event N3 and R5 rundown. So we're already talking about the actual devices themselves. As far as the hands-on goes, you're already seeing those particular videos, and you'll see that the N3 returns with the N1 aesthetic, uh, but it has been shrunken down a little bit, which I think is a wonderful feature of that particular phone, but the rotating camera on the top also returns as well. And as far as the presentation goes, there were a lot, a lot of presentations about the camera itself that not only has the rotation that is now automated with a motor, but also is uh, available with a very good optic package underneath. 16 megapixels is what you get there, and there was a lot lot of hubbub about uh, the kind of certifications that it has from very particular ph uh, photography companies uh, that sort of backed it with their technology. So there's a big presentation about that. Even a photographer from New York came up and talked about how the N3 was better than the DSLR photos that he was taking. That's something that might be up for some debate, but all in all, the N3 does bring back a very nice camera, but also has uh, a couple of other features underneath that include the old click uh, that you can use in order to rotate the camera. The presentation for the most part uh, did really showcase the N3 and uh, a number of the other uh, features have been enhanced from the N1 uh, to be even better like the O-Touch area that now has a fingerprint scanner uh, and can also be used in order to rotate the camera back and forth. The Skyline notification light also returns as well and they did a really good job of really showcasing all the different types of features that are available on the N3. And then of course one of the more questionable choices was to have the phones actually appear from the stage uh, and as you can see here once the, once the devices actually appeared, everyone made a bum rush for the stage. Uh, when I was at the uh, Find 7 launch, unfortunately what happened was they came down from the ceiling from where I was sitting and I was right next to it and when everybody had to bum rush those phones, I almost got trampled. So I'm still questioning whether or not it's a good idea to have that particular aspect because then 10 minutes after people take their photos, they tell everybody to leave anyway and go back to their seats. But nonetheless, everyone got a good look at the N3 and I already got my first look on it that you're watching probably uh, or have already watched uh, on our YouTube channel. But the N3 was definitely the focus of the, uh, the, the event, but for uh, kind of a surprise uh, that Oppo brought out a second smartphone and it was definitely a surprise to everybody in the audience that they had the R5. The R5 is the thinnest smartphone available and actually they had a really nice presentation about all of the different phones that had a claim to fame about being the smallest one starting off with the Motorola Razr version 3 which I thought was really cool and it went all the way down to the iPhone 4 and then finally came the R5. 4.89 millimeters. That's pretty incredible to have a phone that small and be able to uh, use it still pretty well. Uh, everyone already started talking about right after the event if uh, it would bend easily or anything like that if it was actually a sturdy phone. Uh, but from the hands-on, as you probably saw already, I said that the phone actually had a lot of weight to it. There was actually a lot to the phone that was contrary to it being so thin. And that's the reason why I think uh, that stiff feel that the R5 has, it actually will allow it to be a very sturdy phone as well as the fact that that aluminum uh, alloy allows it to be a very attractive one on top of all of that. But nonetheless, the R5 was really the main story in terms of the surprise here. Even though the N3 got a lot of uh, the presentation, the R5 was still a very nice uh, little, little tidbit that came up when it came to Oppo's launch event today here in Singapore. Now the R5 and the N3 were also announced in terms of their prices. And unfortunately, I do think that the price for the N3 is just a little bit high, $649 for a phone that has a lot of different quirks to it that may or may not prove useful for a number of people out there, especially the rotating camera, as was the case with the N3. N1. But then with the R5, it is at $499, which I think is not a horrible price for the phone, especially with the premium materials that is being made of. Uh, but these are more expensive than other phones that Oppo has put out. Whether or not that's going to really, um, really affect the sales is really something that is up to you, the consumer, obviously. So speaking of which, you can still see our hands-on videos on there. I do have a couple of versus videos for the N3 in particular for you, but I am going to have those available for you a little bit later today. Uh, but for now, you can enjoy the hands-on videos. I did have a good time with both of these phones. I actually really think the N3 is a wonderful upgrade from the N1, and I'm looking forward to having my own unit for it as well. The R5, while it does have a great aesthetic to it, and I think it's a wonderful phone, a very solid phone, in fact, I do think that the thinness is its main claim 
to fame and if the thinness doesn't really add too much to the functionality. In fact, it actually loses the headphone jack, so you can argue that the thinness makes them lose some functionality, and it's not necessarily the kind that I would want to get. Uh, the M3 offers more, honestly, but of course it has that much higher price point. But nonetheless, we have the Experience Zone right behind me here, and everyone is getting their hands on these two particular phones, along with a lot of other Oppo products that I'm going to take a look at as well, uh, like the Blu-ray players and whatnot. Products that I knew Oppo already had, but obviously I'm in the mobile space, so all I know really are their phones and whatnot. So uh, really, it's been an interesting time here in Singapore. I'm going to be flying back tomorrow, but I just wanted to give you this look at the actual event to give you the rundown and to have you basically experience what I experienced here over the last, uh, the course of the last like hour and a half to two hours. So keep it tuned to Android Authority for even more coverage of Oppo's brand new phones, the N3 and the R5. Keep it tuned here for those full reviews once I get my review units and also to stay tuned for the Versus videos, the quick looks that I have for you a little bit later today. So keep it tuned here to Android Authority, drop us some likes on our videos and subscribe if you haven't already. You can find the videos right over on the side for both the N3 and the R5. And remember that Android Authority is your source for all things Android.